hath chosen Jerusalem, rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Take away the filthy garments from him, or Joshua. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. After a warning is given to Joshua the high priest, he is alerted by an angel concerning the vision. Joshua responds by stating that he sees a menorah and two olive trees, but is puzzled by the, what, what they represent. The Haftorah ends with the angel, angel's answer, which includes the following proclamation, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. The Berchad Hashad this week is taken from Matthew chapter 5, uh, uh, verses 11 through 19, and it says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot of men. Ye are the light of the world, a city, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or tittle shall no wise pass from the law, to all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Shofarim. Praise you, Yeshua. We give you honor, we give you glory this morning. We thank you and praise you for another Shabbat. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father, that you are the bread from heaven, Lord, that comes down and feeds us every Shabbat, Lord. We thank you that you are the water from the well, Lord, when we're thirsty. And today, Lord, as we come before you, Lord, we desire that water we desire that bread father we desire that this this place father would illuminate light from within shining all around us Lord we desire Lord God that we would walk in your spirit we thank you Lord for the word that it says not by might nor by power but by thy spirit saith the Lord we thank you Lord God that we know you and that you no longer call us servants, but you call us friends, Lord. That we can be a friend to you, Lord. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for that relationship that we each have with you. That we can come daily before you, Lord God, and talk with you. Lord, I ask you to forgive us, Lord God, if there's anything that we've done throughout the week, Lord, that may have offended you in any way. I pray, Lord God, that you would forgive us, Lord God, if we've harmed anyone, if we've spoken to anyone that we, the way we shouldn't have, if we've treated anybody badly, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would just restore all relationships, Father, in this place and, and help us, Lord God, to show love one to another. Lord, as we've been learning throughout the past weeks, Lord, we know that we should never mix the holy with the profane, Lord. And today, Lord God, I ask you to forgive if anyone has done that, Lord. Teach us, Lord God, what we need to do and what's important, Lord. Father, as the word comes forth today, I ask for your anointing, Father, upon the word, Lord. Lord, I just thank you and praise you for what has been prepared for us. 
I thank you, Lord God, as we come before you and worship you today, that we lift up holy hands and we praise you with our whole heart, our soul, and our whole being, Lord. Anoint this service, Lord. Anoint the fellowship. Touch every heart, Lord God. Touch every need. In the name of Yeshua, amen. Amen, amen. Let us stand together. For how lovely the tent of Jacob in the dwelling places of Israel. Matovu. Yaakov Mishkenote Shafted my investor saw me, my name I yes you were. Shafted my investor saw me, my name I yes you were. My and my and my and my and oh my investor saw my and my and my and my and oh my investor saw hey 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 my and my and my and my and my and my investor saw my and my and my and my and my and my Therefore, with joy, we shall draw water from the wells of salvation. Amen, amen. And you may be seated. All right, we begin this with a Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Vayed. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. Blessing Mashiach Yeshua together. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu, et derech ha-Yeshua, b'mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation, Messiah Yeshua. Amen. We all stand for the Shema. Shema Yisrael. Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Chavon Malkuto Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavon Malku
God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of the glorious kingdom forever and ever. Vehafta et Adonai Lohecha, Bokola Vavkuv, Konavskav, Komodakam, Vahayu Hadvrim Hai Ele, Asher Anuki, Matsavka Hayom, Alla Vaveka, Vashinatam Levenek, Vidabartabam, Vishivka Bevetakam, Uvlatka Vadak, Ushavka Ukumeka, Ukshatam Liot Ayadaka, Vahilet of Ben and Neka, Uktatam Zot Betaka, Vishrecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul with all your might and these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall speak of them when you sit in your house when you walk by the way when you lie down and when you rise up you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes you shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and on your gates the hafta Lariacha Kamoka and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of Abraham, God of, uh, God of our fathers, God of Abraham, God of Yeskar, and God of Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers, and brings a redeemer to his children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, shield, Abraham. You are eternally mighty, my Lord, the resurrector of the dead are you, abundantly able to save, who sustains the living with kindness, resurrects the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those asleep in the dust. Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds, and who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death? restores life and makes salvation sprout. Our God and God of our fathers, may be pleased with our rest. Sanctify us in your commandments and grant us our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and make us rejoice in your salvation and purify our hearts to serve you in truth. In love and favor, O Lord our God, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage and may Israel, who sanctifies your name, rest therein. Baruch atah Adonai, mekadesh ha-shabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord, who makes the Shabbat holy. Magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and all say, Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is He, though He be high above all blessings and songs, praises and consolations which are uttered in the world, and all say, Amen. May you make peace in His high places, make peace upon us, upon all Israel, and say, Amen. Yitgadal vietgadash meraba, Yamadi virkud, Vyomlik Mialkate, Bakaikon, Vyomakon, if Kai de Kol, Bait Israel, Bagalav is man, Kariv, Vimru, Yesh me raba, Mevarak, Le alam, or me, or my. Yit barak vished pak, Vit paarvi mamam, Viet na save at the darva, Taleva talal, Shmer kur shabri hu. Liamin kobrakata, Vishra to Tushpekata, Venekamata da Miram, Bama, Vimru. O oh, say shalom bimrama, who ya say shalom aleinu, ve'achu Yisrael, v'imru, himru, amen. O oh, say shalom bimrama. Who ya say shalom aleinu ve'achu Yisrael v'imru himru amen. Ya say shalom, ya say shalom. 
Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom. Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael, Yase Shalom, Yase Shalom, Shalom Aleinu, Yacho Yisrael. May he who makes peace in high places make peace for Israel for all mankind and say, Amen, Amen, Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask and pray, Lord, that you allow us to cause all distractions, Father God, to go away, to flee this place, Father God, you would unite our minds, our hearts, our spirits today. Father, we've come, Lord, to honor you, we've come to praise you and you alone, Father God. We've not come here to ask, we've not come to receive, Father God, but we've come to give out, Lord, to pour out upon you our praise, Father God. So we ask that you would be blessed today, Lord, in our worship, Lord, be blessed in our place, our praise, Father God. Be blessed in our hearts and our minds, Father God, as we come, Lord, to worship you and you alone.
I see fingerprints, the work of your hands, it's all in your hands. I see the evidence, leaving nothing to chance, the world's in your hands. Oh, I rest in your promises, then I'm sure of this. Are yours? Oh, let the waters rise. I'll stand as the oceans roar. Let the earth shake beneath me. Let the mountains roar. You are God over the storm, and I am yours. I hear the voice. Of love, oh, it's calling us home to where we belong. It cripples every fear, and the ones who will feel will walk away. I rest in your promises. Now I'm sure of this. Oh, no power strong enough Oh, to separate me from your love I'm yours Oh, let the waters rise I will stand as the oceans roar Let the earth shake beneath me Let the mountains fall You are God and I am yours. Oh, let the waters rise. I will stand as the oceans roar. Let the earth shake beneath me. Let the mountains fall. You are God over the storm. And I
Yeshua, we welcome you into this 
presence, Lord. Your presence, let it come in here. Oh, we welcome you. Let us feel the weight of your glory fall in here. Oh, let us feel the weight of your glory fall on us. We come with worship to exalt you, O oh God, to lift you high. May the incense of our praise be a sweet aroma unto you, O oh God. Be glorified today. Be worshipped. Accept these sacrifices of praise, O oh God. before you, O oh God, seeking your face, wanting to sit at your feet, Father, and take in your presence, to be consumed by your fire, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you that we can enter in, O oh God, to the Holy of Holies, that we can come by the blood of the Lamb and have sweet fellowship with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God. just worship you today nothing else matters besides you we cast all of our crowns our distractions the weight of this world we cast it aside and we just focus on you our eyes are set on you today oh God this very moment speak forth your words of truth cause your fire to make us clean Your bride, let your word come forth today, Lord, and pierce each heart, cutting away the fat of our hearts, O oh God. Give us your heart today, O oh God. Help us to understand who you are, your ways, O oh God, and to know your truth and to know your purpose for each of our lives, O oh God. Just speak forth today, O oh Lord. Just worship you and thank you for this time. Just pray all these things in Yeshua's name. Vahib and Suwaha Arom. When the ark would travel, Moshe would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. And let them that hate you flee from you. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Yerushalayim. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Yisrael. Yamod, Naphtali, ben Avraham, la Torah. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach leolam vayed. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. Asher bachar benu mikol hamim v'natan lanu et torato b'ruchat Adonai notein haTorah. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the Universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us His Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, Giver of the Torah. Yeladim.
Bait HaYeladim, children of Rosh Pina, up front. And as we do every week, we pray a weekly blessing over each and every one of them as a group. But first we say, Boker Tov Yeladim. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for these wonderful children and the families they represent. May they be blessed abundantly as Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Leah, Ephraim, and Manasseh. Lord, I ask that you surround them with a hedge of protection, that you would keep them safe from harm's way, that you would keep them healthy, Lord, and away from the sickness that's around about us, O oh Lord. Lord, I ask that as they mature physically, for those that are standing before you this day that may not know who you are, Yeshua, that you will begin to draw them near to you. That when they reach that age of understanding, Lord, they will receive you as their Mashiach. And they will grow and mature in the faith. And that you would surround them with godly men and women who will assist them on their life's journey. They're such a blessing to us, O oh Lord, and we thank you for them in Yeshua's name. Amen. Bear Adonai and Moshe Limor, the Bear El Haron, Ba'om Marta, Alav, Baheo Techa, Et, Anarot, El Mul, Penei, Ham Nora, Alav, Shivot, Ha Norot, Ba'il, Ken, Aharon, et Mul, Pene, Hamnoro, He Allah, Neroteha, Kaasher, Zivadonai, et Moshe. And the Lord spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto Haarun, and say unto him, When thou lightest the lamps, the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick. And Haarun did so. He lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlestick, as the Lord commanded Moses. Amen. Amen. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher natan lanu turati met v'chai olam, natal betokhinu, Baruch atah Adonai, notain ha'torah. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. The Zot HaTorah, Asher Sam Moshe, Lifnei Bnei Yisrael, Al Pi Adonai, Biad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This Torah scroll is the word of God. Yeshua is this word. John the Immerser said in John 1.29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God's word is written on lambskin. Yeshua is this Lamb. In John 12.32, Yeshua said, And I, if I am lifted up from the, from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. The two wooden poles holding this Torah scroll are called Eitz Chaim, or Tree of Life. Yeshua was sacrificed on two wooden poles some 2,000 years ago for our sins. Eitz Chaim Hi, Lemachazakim Ba, Vetemkeim Meushar, Dakei Dakei Noam, Vakol Nativites Shalom, Hashivenu Adonai Leka, Venishuva Kadesh, Yamanu Kakadem. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and happier those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Cause us to return to you, Adonai, and we shall return, renew our days as of old. Revelation 2.7 reads, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the congregations. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yeshua was, is, and shall ever be this word of the one living God that we look upon this day for our salvation. Yeah, be seated. Uh, 
Shabbat Shalom. Today we want to talk about a spiritualization of a physical physical truth. So I want you to picture yourself as you are personally the destination of God. You are ultimately the destination of God. And you are almost like Jerusalem. But God's interesting how he's established an order in the physical. He brings it about to the spiritual, which is what we live today. And he's going to take the spiritual and make it and real, help us to realize the spiritual and the physical yet again. So he starts with the physical, goes to the spiritual, and we're going to realize him yet again in the physical. The Midrash discusses that Aaron, he did not bring an offering for the sanctuary's dedication with the other princes of the tribes. And so he thought in his heart, woe is me. Perhaps it's on my account that God doesn't accept the tribe of Levi. And God said to Moses, go and say to Aaron, fear not, you have in store for you an honor greater than this. The offering shall remain in force only as long as the temple stands. This is the Midrash. Listen. God tells Moses to tell Aaron, fear not, you have in store for you an honor greater than this. For the offering shall remain in force only as long as the temple stands, but the lamps shall always give light. The offerings that we give are only for a period of time, but the lamps will always give light. The idea that the lamp or the temple menorah would always give light in Judaism is represented by the Hanukkah menorah. But this explanation does not sufficiently explain the fact that the light must continually burn so that the people of the tribes of Israel and the world around them may know and see that the Spirit of God is in operation on the earth, moving, guiding, and directing the children of Israel along their journey. The lamp burning in the temple continually, the Ner Tamid, which is represented by this light that we have over the Torah, it's called Ner Tamid, a continual fire, continual light, that has to always be burning in the temple and that, that the offerings may go away, but the light must always remain. The light shows that God is guiding. The light shows that God is directing, but the offerings may go away. The temple may be destroyed, but the light must always be lit to show that God is guiding and directing, that your path is, no long, is not dark, that you're not walking in darkness, but you're walking in God's marvelous, marvelous light. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, what? Question mark. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, when, which is inside of you, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You see, the destruction of the physical temple in Jerusalem was a sign of the fundamental change in the way that God would interact and direct his people, a change that was prompted by the death and resurrection of the sacrifice of our Mashiach. It's important to make that distinction. It's not the death, it's not death because of death because of natural means, it's death because of sacrifice. That's very important to understand. 
He didn't die because he had to. He died because he sacrificed himself. He gave himself. Christianity has talked about it throughout all of history, how the Jews killed Yeshua. The Jewish people killed Yeshua, and then the Jewish people said, no, the Romans did. They killed him. No one killed him. He sacrificed himself. He was sacrificed. He was not, mur he was not murdered. He was intended. He used, he used man's innate wickedness. He used man's innate wickedness to, to allow him to offer himself up. As a tool, he used it. But he sacrificed himself. And here, there's a fundamental change. But God didn't immediately destroy the process that was commanded in the Torah. He slowly allowed for the people to learn of the transition to an internal relationship that was predicated on God's action from an external relationship predicated on man's. You understand that? Moving from a relationship that's external, which requires man's action, to a relationship that's internal, which was the result of God's action. The external relationship requires us to do something. The internal relationship required God to do something. So we are moving into this internal relationship with God slowly, this spiritual relationship with God slowly. Prior to the death and the resurrection of Yeshua, the relationship between God and man was solely based upon the actions that we perform, the actions that we do on the earth to maintain our own purity, our own sanctification. And the reasoning behind this is that God could not be intertwined with the profane, thus man was required to physically shun the profane because his heart was innately wicked. And he had to make concerted effort to overcome that wickedness that lived in his heart. It was his job. Man had to do that for God. He had to continually find a way to seek purification, sanctification, vexing his heart, vexing his soul. Because his heart was wicked. The heart was, in fact, wicked. The heart is wicked. And God didn't, have a, God didn't have a mechanism to change the heart that, at that point. He didn't have a mechanism to change it. There was no change yet. There's, a, there's an idea that when I was in the police academy, I, we were reading these cases. And during a rape, if a, if, a, if a woman, or a man for that matter, is raped, it's proven that their brain chemistry can actually be altered and change them. The event changes them. Who they were, they can be completely different after it. You may not understand it. Well, what happened to you? You used to be, you used to be this, and you used to be that. Their brain actually changes from the trauma of the experience. There's a mechanism that changes that person. Prior to Yeshua's death and resurrection, there was no mechanism to change the fabric of your heart. Once Yeshua died and rose, he was able to change your heart, the internal wickedness of a man's heart. So that as they make decisions, their decisions are moving more toward the good versus the bad. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But there was a change that God had to bring. It was able to make this change in our heart, moving the battle of the flesh to the internal from the external. 
So prior to Yeshua's death and resurrection, we had, we would react, we would perform our lives, and then we would react and go after purification and sanctification. We would bring offerings and sacrifices and ask for forgiveness. We would react. After the death and resurrection of Yeshua, something was able to change inside of man where they made the decision early not to do something they were inclined to do. The battle was in here and in here. Rather than just being, you know, barbarians and, may, and just doing whatever and then going, ah, that probably wasn't the right thing to do, I need forgiveness. They would think barbaric and then say, no, I won't do that, and they'd battle it. They'd battle it inside internally. And then there was a shift that happened to the spiritual. Our hearts were able to be purified, making man righteous from within rather than righteous from without. In essence, this relationship went from outside in to the inside out, and God, through the blood of Yeshua, began to work on the essence of man, his nephesh, his soul, so that he could be in constant communication and relationship, engaging grace in man's life. He wanted to work on the essence of man, the nephesh, which is going to live forever. The nephesh lives forever. The physical body dies, it decays, but the nephesh lives forever. And it's what, in fact, it's the root cause of all of the evil that happens in our lives. The, the soul of man is either innately wicked or innately good, and it is the root cause of the actions of man. So God is able to dig deep inside and get, get inside of you, and he's able to change you from within so that you can begin to make the right choices. It means that man would represent God no longer, a, no longer as a physical destination, but man himself, wherever he is, will become the light of the world to the spiritual darkness that permeates throughout creation. Think about the temple that existed. That was the light, and everyone said that's where God is. And they would look to Jerusalem and they'd look to the temple and say, that's where God is. And the light that burned inside was the representation of God himself. Meaning that God was physically there. The light that burned inside the temple. Now, God's destination is your heart to live inside of you which means he puts the light inside of you. You become the destination. You become the light. You become the proof of God in the world rather than this physical temple. And people used to run to that because that's where God is. Now people can run to you because that's where God is. People that need God will come to you to find him because he lives in you no different from running to the temple people would run to the temple because that's where God is people will run to you because that's where God is the light of God lives inside of you maybe you don't understand when people come to you they ask you questions about you know their life or they spill their guts or they cry to you I mean I I get that all the time I literally always get people crying to me in the outside world at work Everyone cries. I, it, I mean, I'm talking physical tears. Men, grown men that look like burly men will be in a meeting with me and begin to cry about an issue or situation in their life. Well, why on earth? And everyone looks at, you know, people that are my peers, they look at me and go, why does everyone cry with you? I have no idea. Perhaps it's the light of God, perhaps. Maybe they feel they can. Maybe they can spill their guts. Maybe they can, you know, tell you their problems, their issues, their concerns, because they feel that that's the place to find God. That's the place to find hope. You are the destination of God. We have to begin to think that way. 
And if you are the destination of God, and you represent God, then how are you representing him in the world? Matthew 5, it says that you are the light of the world. Matthew 5. You are the light of the world. A city that is on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good works, and they may glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let your light shine. Change the world, and let your light shine. No one is going to run to Jerusalem to find God. They're going to run to you to find God. If your light is burning, there's someone lost in a dark town. All the lights are out. The street lights are out. It's 2.30 in the morning. All the homes have their lights out. There's someone lost. They don't know how they got there. There's one house with their lights on. Where will they run to? All the lights are out. 2.30 in the morning. There's one house with its lights on. They're going to run to that house. Why? Because inside that house someone is awake that can help me you have to have your light burning for people to run to you that are in the darkness if your lights not burning they'll never run to you they'll never find you you will not be found We have to have a clear understanding of how important it is that we live our lives. How, I lost myself. How important we are in the lives of people that we connect with on a daily basis. You are a mentor. You are a you are a listener. You are a hearer. You are a you are a, a, a an advice giver. You are a, you're a prayer warrior. You're a, a healer of the mind and the heart with your words. You're, you're all these things to people in your life. And you have to be able to understand that you as the temple of God are a place that people should run to. We don't think that all the time. I mean, we don't realize that. We don't realize when I say you are the temple of God, that means that people should come to you to find him. They should come to you. Not, not we're all in the same, we're all looking for God, where is he, you know, and there's a lot of that, even in the church today. Everybody will say, we're all looking for him, we're all together. No, 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 no. If you are his, you found him, he lives in you, share him. You have an obligation. You're obliged to do the work of God. You're obliged to do that. You're obliged to be the light of God. We have the power to impact simply because we shine. Ignited by the flame of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. We impact simply because the Holy Spirit lives in us. Therefore, we have to what? We have to watch how we talk. We have to watch how we walk. We have to, we have to be that light to the world that's in darkness. You and I have hundreds, if not thousands, of opportunities to make positive spiritual impacts on the people that surround us daily. It is, it's distinctly through your efforts that God will be seen and he will be revealed 
to the lost house of Israel when they're wandering through that dark town and your lights on they will come to you to find their place of rest I was told by somebody that everyone has their eyes on me when they should be looking at something else they are in fact watching me the actions I'm making the changes I'm enforcing in my own life that are affecting the lives of others it's sometimes very hard for the flesh to cope with the responsibility that the spirit carries in terms of teaching the lost sharing the gospel of the kingdom to the house of Israel and the world that's a hard thing to understand how do you do it how do you share the gospel of the kingdom to the, to the world and to the lost? How do you do that? Do you go stand on a street corner, flipping a sign? You know, you see, I ever see that like outside of, uh, outside of cell phone companies, mobile companies, they have those big signs, they're turning around and they're telling you to come in. You do that, the scripture verses on it. Do you stand out there with a Bible, shake it and tell people from a, from a, from a megaphone? How do, you, how do you share it? It starts with your lifestyle. It starts with your life. It starts with being in light. You ever go outside at night and you put on a light and all the bugs attract to that light? If you are a light, you will be attractive. People will naturally be attracted to you. And they'll come to you. And you'll talk. And they'll learn about you. And they'll learn about who you are and what you believe and what you, what you think about in life. It will be easy to share the kingdom because they'll simply come. You'll be attractive. This is not attractive. No one wants to come up to that person. A, Deb a Debbie Downer. A sad face. It's not attractive. All of us that are introverts. Me not included. All of us that are introverts. Does being an introvert stop you or hinder you? from sharing the gospel of the kingdom. No! You must still be a light. How are you a light? Even if you're an introvert, you can be attractive to people. They'll want to be around you. They'll come to you and they'll not even understand it. Why am I coming to you? Why? You don't even talk much. Because the Spirit of God which is in you will overflow out of you and they'll resonate with it. They'll recognize it like moths to a flame. Moths to a flame. And you'll burn them up, you'll catch them fire and they too will have the Holy Spirit lit inside of them. And they too will be walking this earth lighting other fires. Why? Because they are the destination of God. You are the destination of God. It's his, it is His will to be in you. To be walking with you. Not in a building. Not on a menorah. Not sitting there lonely waiting for people to come to the temple and visit Him. There God is. Look, he's up there on that hill called Jerusalem in that temple there that, you know, well, let's go up there. No, I don't want to go up there now. We'll go up there some other time. And there God is sitting on a throne, you know. Why don't anyone come see me? That's not his will. You're the destination of God. You're the temple of God. He lives in you. You're with him all day long. He's, he's there in you so that everyone that you touch they can touch others and they can touch others and exponentially the kingdom of God is brought out to the world at an exponential rate. Everyone that we've touched has touched someone else 
has touched someone else. It's multi-level marketing at its best. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You are Jerusalem. You are a city that is on a hill. And every man can see you. And when they look at you, they look upward toward the sun where the city is set. The sun, S-O-N. When you make Yeshua your high priest, you become his servant and priests that are required to walk in the office of the royal priesthood in a manner that reflects God's holiness and authority in order that others can be changed and perhaps introduced to the families of Israel. Continuing in Matthew 5, it says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under a foot of man. You are the light of the world, a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on candlesticks it's given it giveth, giveth its light unto all that are in the house. Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Once you accept Yeshua into your life, become a part of the flock, traveling and moving where God leads the flock by the fire and the cloud of the Holy Spirit. When the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they were led by God's cloud as an entire nation, and not as individuals. In fact, the individuals that had a difficult time coping with the lack of specified attention from God wound up perishing in the wilderness for their sin and their forgetful nature. But many of the people that were led out of the wilderness began to murmur, and they complained. They complained about the, the lack of meat to satiate their flesh, to satiate their own personal desires, which was an individual need that was birthed in Egypt in their former life. They needed to satiate their flesh. And God was about to move them into a, world where, into a world where He was going to satiate their flesh. He was going to provide for them. Not man, not Egypt, not Pharaoh, not the foreigners. But God's people will now be fed by His hand and His hand alone. The foreigners will no longer feed them. No longer will I allow my children to be fed by someone other than myself. I will feed them. And here they are in Egypt, murmuring and complaining, very upset over the fact that they did not have what they were used to in Egypt. They began to complain that God had brought them into the wilderness and refrain from providing them their food and the, the, the stuff that they lusted for and that and the, the, the very God that they feared was now being put on trial for not providing sufficient sustenance for the people's needs and Moses was being forced to act as a judge a, rule, a role that he refused to fulfill he was not going to be a judge the judge of God he was, the ju he was God's judge of the people he was not going to be the people's judge of God here, God's on trial. God, you did this. This is your fault. You're, you're obligated to us. You pulled us here. Their lots began to overcome their experience to the degree that they no longer seemed to fear the God they saw perform the mighty miracles before all of Egypt and its sons. They didn't fear God anymore. It just experienced it, like literally within the same weeks. I mean, they experienced miracles and they didn't fear God. Not even in the least bit. I had a miracle happen to me this week. I'm not going to say it because it's, it's a personal thing, but I had a miracle. and it, I mean, literally it was a miracle. Just a little over a week ago, I prayed something very specific. I prayed something very specific. And that very thing I prayed happened two days ago. The exact thing I prayed happened 
two days ago. Four days before, I, four days after I prayed it. I can't even describe to you the feeling I had. I can't even describe to you the the awe that I had that it actually occurred. It's an impossibility that this would have happened. I prayed it as a plea, knowing that there's no way this could actually happen. It happened. My wife says to me, well, we know that God listens to your prayers. My mom says to me, you need to make sure that you watch what you pray. It's, I can't ever forget those miracles that God put in my life and in my path. I can't forget those things. If I do, I become no different than those in Egypt that murmured and complained. I become no different than them. And the same thing goes for you. The miracles that happen in your life, whether or not you believe them or whether or not you think they're coincidental or whether or not you think that they are, in fact, God, is up to you. My personal belief is that there's nothing that happens that is not by the hand of God. Nothing. No matter if you are God's or not God's. He's the judge of the righteous and the unrighteous. He's the judge. Therefore, he allows all things to happen to all men. And the world will hear what I say, and they hear those words, and they say to themselves, Man, you're a fanatic. You know, you're a fanatic. You know, you're you're crazy. I had a, I had a friend I work with that said, you know, George W. Bush said that he prayed every day when he was in the, in the White House. And he asked God for guidance. He said, I don't want anyone guiding this country that asks some air, invisible air for guidance. That's what he tells me. I said, well, dude, you're, you're going to a really hot place if you don't change your perspective. And I don't want you to go to that hot place. I love you. I want you to be with me. And that's not a joke. I mean, that's real. But you have to have an experience to be, arguably, you have to have an experience. It doesn't just, it doesn't just happen. I mean, think about it. If I, if I didn't have experiences with God, and if I didn't have the opportunity to experience God because my family has positioned me so, so to do, you know, and I even, asked, you know, I was asked by some Israelis that came and visited us, uh, you know, a year ago or so. You know, they said, well, if, you, if your parents didn't teach you this way, would you still be doing this? Would you be who you are today? And I would argue, well, yeah, I would be who I am today because I, you know, God found me and he was going to find me regardless. Well, no, see, the problem is, is that, you know, you, you were raised this way and so therefore you, you know, and, and again, that's what a scientist and a logical thinker would think. That's the way I cannot think. That's the way I refuse to think. I will not think. And you shouldn't either. You should believe that God brought you here on his own. He brought my parents to where they are because he wanted me to be where I am. Because he wanted my children to be where they will be. The blessing happens upon the generations. The blessing happens on the people that God chooses. And maybe he chose my great, 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 great grandparents back in the past. So that that line would continue and it would come into me. Because he needed me for something. Or maybe he needs my descendants for something. And so I needed to be this way so that I teach them. Who knows what it is, but what I can tell you is the flame that gets lit is the flame that is required to move where God needs them to move. Your flame is lit for a reason. Your flame is lit for a purpose. You need to spread the fire.
And when the people complained, Numbers chapter 11, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. Moses prayed to God, and the fire was quenched. He asked for a prayer, and a mir- he asked for something, and a miracle happened. He prayed, and that specific thing happened. Is it possible that that would occur? Yes. How do I know? I experienced it this very week. He called the name of the place Tibera, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely? The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. I didn't know they had all that back then, but apparently they did. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing at all. Beside this manna. The manna was a coriander seed. And the color thereof, the color of delium. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it into mills and beat it into mortar. And baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was the taste of fresh oil. When the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. And Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. And Moses was displeased. I mean, they're, they're, they're weeping in their... Look, all we have is this. That. I mean, what planet are you on? You're in the middle of the desert. You just ran from Egypt. And you need something to care for you. And so God gave you this manna. And you will live. And you will live freely. And no longer enslaved. And Moses said to the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? Wherefore have I not found favor in your sight? Thou layest the burden of all this people upon me. Have I conceived these people? Have I begotten them? That thou should say unto me, Carry them in thy bosom? As a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou swearest to their fathers. This is a central lesson to be learned that emerges from the story it's, that's found here in Numbers. The children of Israel, they were blessed to experience and witness the miracles of God with their physical eyes. Having seen the plagues destroy Egypt, having witnessed the death angel passing over the sons of Israel, walking through the water upon dry ground and coming to the amount of God for his word. They were blessed to see the mighty, miraculous power of the King of Kings, yet remarkably they forgot with time and the miracles they witnessed. So many of us who have seen the miracles of God with our physical eyes have forgotten and allowed our individual desires to overtake the message of the kingdom that should be donned by the flock of the shepherd. We're required to be a light to all men. However, without the memory of the experiences of God's hand, we may just forget and decide to wander into a pasture that is not of our gods and leaving the cares of the flock behind us. Proverbs 20, 27 says, The spirit of man is is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Your spirit is a candle of light that will be used to ignite the flame and spirit of another somewhere in the world. Do you know where God will decide to use you? Can you predict the time and the place that the presence of God will call you to minister to the lost house of Israel and the kingdom of the redeemed? It is vital for you to focus on your inward man, determine whether you are acting as a member of the flock community or as an individual that serves selfishly the desires of the flesh. Numbers chapter 8 verse 1 through 3 it says the Lord spake to Moses speak to Aaron say to him when you lightest the lamps the seven lamps shall give light over against the candlestick and Aaron did so and he lighted the lamps thereof over against the candlestick as the Lord commanded Moses. There's an interpretation from our sages about this verse these verses. 
It says the spiritual significance of the mitzvah of lighting the menorah is that one should be a lamp lighter who ignites the latent potential within the soul of man, a lamp of God. The soul of man is a lamp of God, as it says in Proverbs. And we all are lamp lighters. Here, too, the endeavor must be to kindle the lamp so that a flame arises of its own accord in teaching and influencing one's fellow. The objective should be to establish him or her as a self-sufficient luminary to assist in developing his talents and abilities so that his lamp independently glows and in turn kindles the potential in others. When the high priest came to kindle the menorah's lamps each afternoon in the holy temple, he found them fully prepared for lighting. Earlier in the day, the lamps had been cleaned and filled with oil and fresh wicks and had been inserted. Listen to that. When the high priest came to light the candelabra, the candlesticks, the menorah, he found them fully prepared for lighting. There was fresh oil. There was new wicks. Is it possible to light a lamp that is not fully prepared to be lit? Not necessarily. Maybe you're thinking, well, I lit a candle last night and there's still a little bit of wick left and, you know. But what if the, what if the, the wax that melted with that last night's wick it decides to harden and it hardens all the way up to the top of that wick. You can't light that candle again. You have to dig it out. Prepare it to be lit. People will not have their fires lit if they're not prepared to be lit. Do you understand that we spend a lot of time banging our head against walls over people because we want them to be saved and we and we think that there, we think that there are, are uh, what do you call it, like notch in the door or something, you know, in our belts. You know, I got to get that guy saved because, you know, he really needs it. Well, if he's not prepared to be lit, he will not be lit. You're wasting your time. But guess what happens? When you are a fire and a flame of God, the candles that are prepared to be lit will find you. And all you do is light their wick. They'll be, they'll be ready. They'll be wanting to see it. All he had to do was bring near the flame he carried so that its proximity to the waiting lamp would unleash the potential for illumination which the lamp already hold. What we gain from this is that we are all members of the world priesthood. We are the flame which burns deep inside of each of every one of us. When we are in the world, our sole purpose should be to ignite the wick of the spirit that lays dormant in the soul of man. You may be the person that is being talked about around coffee tables in homes all across the world because of your submission to God and obedience to the light candles in hearts through ministering the kingdom. You may be the person that says that somebody at their house is sitting there and saying, I met someone today. And they really changed my thoughts. Man, I really had an amazing experience talking to that person. Or man, you know, you're, you're sitting at home watching TV and somewhere in the world they're sitting in their homes talking about you. Who lit their light. And then they become one that is talked about in the homes of people. And then they become one. And it's not you for fame or for fortune or for, or for vain purposes. Not for vanity. Not to carry God's name in vain. But because God used you as His instrument of change. You must be the miracle in the lives of the people that you come in contact with 
The miracle that cannot deny or forget when times become difficult and the flesh desires arise to choke the spirit, you have to be the miracle that displays the truth of God for all men to see, teaching community and humility to the lost individual that wander in the world. The miracle that shines so bright that those that are awaiting illumination, God will come into proximity to your spirit, igniting and joining the family of God. Amen. It is the duty, our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation, for he made us unlike the nations of the lands, and he's not placed us like the families of the earth. He's not made our portion like theirs and our lot like all their multitude. And we bend the knee and bow and acknowledge our thanks before the King of kings, the Holy One, blessed is he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation. The seat of his glory is in the heavens above and the presence of his power is in the most exalted heights. He's our God, there's none other. True is our King. There's nothing beside him as it is written in his Torah. You shall know this day and take to your heart that the Lord, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth below. He is. Amen. Till it's all that I know. Set me a place, set me a place, so I never grow cold. Set me a place, set me a place, till it's all that I know. Set me a place, set me a place, so I never grow cold. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. May your fire start. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. Keep me burning. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. May your fire start. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. Set me ablaze, set me ablaze with a single obsession. Set me ablaze, set me ablaze with endless passion. Set me ablaze, set me ablaze with a single obsession. Set me ablaze, set me ablaze with endless passion, Lord. Come breathe. Come breathe on the coals of my heart, may your fire stop. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart, keep me burning. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart, may your fire stop. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart, keep me burning. Breathe. Come breathe on the coals of my heart, may your fire stop. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart, keep me burning. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart, may your fire stop. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. Wildfire. Burn brighter here inside my heart. Consume me, rage to me, I want all you are. Wildfire, burn brighter here inside my heart. Consume me, rage to me, I want all you are. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. May your fire stop. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. Keep me burning. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. May your fire start in me. Breathe, 
Come breathe on the coals of my heart. Wildfire burn brighter here inside our hearts. Consume us, rage through us, we want all we want. Wildfire burn brighter here inside my heart. Rage through me. Race through me, I want all you want. Oh God, oh Lord, consume me, race through me, I want all you want. Consume me, race through me, I want all you want. Consume me, rage through me, I want all you want. Oh Lord, come breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. Sing it. Breathe. Come breathe on the coals of my heart. Sing it out. Breathe. Come breathe on the coals of my heart. Oh God. Breathe. Come breathe on the coals of my heart. Breathe. Oh, won't you breathe? Breathe, Lord. Burn brighter here inside my heart. Consume me, race through me, Lord. Breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. Oh, breathe, come breathe on the coals of my heart. Oh, breathe on me. a place, set us a place till it's all that we know God set us a place set us a place so we never grow cold set us a place oh with a single obsession set us a place with endless passion oh God, oh, set us ablaze. For you dance over me. While I am on away, you sing all around, but I never hear the sound. You dance over me. Sing, oh, you sing all around. Oh, I never hear. Oh, Lord, I'm amazed by you. I am amazed by you. Oh, I'm amazed. Oh, God.
amazed by you. I'm amazed, oh, by you and your love for me. You paint the morning skies, oh, with miracles, oh, and mine, my home will always stand, as you hold me, hold me in your head, Lord, I'm a man.
Within us, that your light burns bright. Oh God, I just pray that each person that stands before you today, that each day they would seek you, each day they would prepare themselves for you, oh God, to grow closer to you, to burn brighter for you. And as we seek your face, Father, we seek your purpose for our lives. We say, Here we are, Hinene. Send us and we will go forth to this dark and dying world. We will shine brightly for you, O oh God, for your glory and your kingdom. Use us as you please. We thank you for this Shabbat. We thank you for this time that we could be in your presence, worshiping as one. Just pray that you would be glorified today and that everything that we do and say and think, God would bring glory into your name. Just worship you and pray all these things in Yeshua's name. As always, please check the back table uh, for CDs of today's message. Also, there are a couple of sign-up lists. The one is for the auction that is being held at the Widmer House on June 24th. And then also for the uh, bike, Rosh Pina Bikeathon or uh, biking trip on uh, actually this Sunday, June 3rd. Um, I know it starts at 11 o'clock, so please sign up for that. Paul, I don't know if you had any additional...
Awesome. Again, that's uh, this Sunday at 11 o'clock. Um, also, uh, we will have Midrash with the rabbi today. Uh, it's 1 o'clock now. We're thinking about around 2 o'clock. And um, we do also have Yeshiva this week, 7.30 to 9. Please have read James chapter 1 and chapter 2. Uh, that's what we'll be discussing uh, this Wednesday night, 7.30. And Kathy, uh, dance for the kids. That's what I thought. Yep, dance for the kiddos at, from 6.15 to 7.15 this Wednesday night. I believe that's all I got. So as we go into Oneg, let's say the bracha together. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and I was thinking about it, and then she threw me off. Uh, the, uh, also, just a reminder that um, obviously it's nice, out, uh, it's nice out today, as well as obviously we're in the summer uh, months now, so it's going to be very nice going forward. Just a reminder that we do have the picnic tables out there, so please feel free to take some food in Oneg and take it out, put the uh, umbrellas up, and have a nice picnic outside as the kiddos, I'm assuming, will be on the playground as well. So as we go into Oneg, uh, as we say the bracha together, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam ha'motzi lakamin haloretz ba'ashem Yeshua ha'mashiach Amen. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the breath in the land. Name Yeshua the Messiah. Amen. Shavuot tov.